it's quality, not quantity. And I think sometimes, I think we all need to remember that in whatever color that we raise. It's quality of your rabbits, not how many you bring necessarily, you know? And so as long as you know you're improving it, I mean, and if we get a really, really nice one, obviously we're gonna keep it. And then we cull two of our older stuff that, you know, now we've moved past that genetics, you know, and keep trying to move forward all the time, so. Hello, everybody. Um, thank you, David, for asking us to talk about the Chinchilla Dutch, which is the seventh variety accepted to the Dutch. And we are Jill and Troy Erke. So a little background on us. Um, I've been an ARBA member and American Dutch Club member for 35 plus years. And I started with Dutch. Um, over the years, I've raised some other breeds, but along with the Dutch, but I've always had Dutch as my primary breed. And uh, I guess I'll introduce Troy for him. Troy's been 30 plus years, and I do like to mention that I've been raising him longer than him, uh, members of the ARBA. And he, he actually started in LOPS and then he moved over to Dutch. And he is an ARBA judge. We currently raise Dutch Californians and Britannia Petites, the both of Troy's, um, here in Iowa. And we raise both show and commercial. And our kids have basically been raised in the barn and uh, they raise Dutch and Polish. So that's just a little bit about us. So let's start talking about the Dutch. So a lot of people ask me, well, why did you want to create a chinchilla Dutch? Like, what's the point? Some people said, Dutch have enough colors, six colors is fine. Well, Dutch don't have chinchilla in the genes of the breed. It's not like getting a lilac or a gold or a blue gray, which is kind of just like a dilute that comes out of the breeding of other colors. So the reason I wanted to do it is really because I wanted to make a correctly colored steel Dutch. And uh, my mentor and the esteemed rabbit breeder, judge, professor, and friend, Dr. Scott Williamson, he had told me, I went to him one day and I was like, man, these seals, they're just not, they're not like they should be. They're not that really clean color. And he said, well, the only way to really fix a steel is to have chinchilla in the coloring. And our steels were what I would consider too brassy. They were almost like a black with like a goldish kind of ticking to them. And really, and this is like in the late 80s, 90s, actually all the way up until today too, but the really the only thing you had to breed into them were grays or blacks. So when you took a steel and you bred it to a gray or you bred it to a black, well, it just got darker. There was nothing there to help make it better. So I wanted to create more of what we would call like a silver tip steel. And the old standard would say that a steel should look like freshly broken piece of steel. So it was like um, black with brightly colored. And now it says in the standard, it should be black with off white or cream ticking um, is what you wanna see. So, you know, more of a lighter silvery kind of tip. So to do that, you need chinchilla. So uh, Scott Williamson had said too, if you wanna see, see that, go look at the lops. So the lops have agoutis or what we call, um, or chestnuts, what we call grays. And they have chins and they have gold tip steels and they have silver tip steels. So they have that chinchilla in there to be able to help with that. So I started the project originally in 1993 and this was actually um, a master's uh, thesis in college, uh, a genetics thesis. And um, so I was gonna create chins. That was, I was gonna do it twofold, my master's and this. So I wanted a standard chinchilla because it's closer in size to a Dutch, but I couldn't find any standard chinchillas. I lived in California and, you know, I got to a few nationals on the West Coast, but I didn't travel a lot into the Midwest and there was no standards out on that. So what I could find was there was an American chin breeder. Um, so that is actually my first doe and that is her first litter. And so I got an American chin doe and I crossed her to a black Dutch. And I think she had 11 in that litter and that's her litter right there. And she had basically, they were all grays with very little white on them. Some of them had like a really thin blaze. You can see one of the babies in the back. Um, a few of them had a white snip on the nose and a couple of them had a white patch on, on one shoulder. I saved some of the ones that had some of the white markings on them to see what they would grow up to look at. And uh, when they grew up, they were really, really big. So they were just, that was gonna be another long road to make them smaller. So after that American chin cross didn't turn out uh, the way I wanted, I kind of took a break from working on them and went and did other stuff. And 
when I, around 2002, I decided, okay, I'm going to try this again. And I found a standard chin buck at an ARBA convention and I started up. And so the first cross basically looked the same as the American chin cross with, um, I brought them to a black Dutch and I had a few thin blazed, um, like a white patch on a shoulder, maybe a white snip on the nose, all were grays, but the size was much better. So I continued breeding those and saving and getting them a little bit better. And I applied and received the COD in November of 2006. So I continued the COD process of breeding and improving and doing all that. And at, during this time, I had close to 80 cages now devoted to chins. And the funny thing is, is I obviously had never done a COD before and I did not realize how much cage space it takes to do a project like this. And more so on a Dutch, because you're just not trying to make a new color, you're making a new color and you're putting all the markings back on it too. So it's almost like you're doing two things instead of one thing. Um, I tried many different combinations of keeping what babies came out of what crosses. Um, and I found that once you get past that first generation, that F1, or even as you go along in all the generations, you can only, you have to just keep the improved rabbits and you don't want to um, start going backwards. So the very first several generations, they were all grays. So not a chin in on any of them, which was kind of frustrating because here I am with all this cage space and all these rabbits. And I'm like, where are my chins? It isn't working. And I was being told, be patient, be patient. So I would get a few blacks and I would get some odd colors. And the odd colors were like blue grays, opals, squirrels, other stuff that would come out. And that was primarily due to the fact that the blacks that I had um, had blue in the background somewhere. And so that blue influenced that and would come out in some of these. So at the time that I was working on color, I had to work on the markings and type, like I said. Um, I had to put all the markings back on the rabbit. And the standard chins don't have a Vanna gene in their genetics. So they don't really have that um, willingness to donate, you know, large amounts of white to a rabbit. Whereas, and they kind of overpower the Dutch Vienna gene. So that's why you don't see a lot of white on those babies. Um, so I had to keep the rabbits that had more white instead of more color. And I had to work on making them also more Dutch tight, um, which would be the shorter ears, rounder heads, smaller overall size, and then shorter fur length. And I do have to give credit to Troy. At that time, uh, he had moved out. We had gotten engaged. And uh, I had a buck that was in my barn that I, I, I didn't really like him. But for some reason, I kept him. So I had to have liked something in him. But he was down in one of the corners on the bottom, the bottom row. And he told me, he goes, why aren't you using that buck? And I'm like, eh, I don't know. I'm, I, I keep using these. And he's like, well, I think you should really start using that buck. And I was like, eh, I don't think so. And he's like, no. He went out there and he like bred this buck to like all my does. I think I was kind of mad at him at the time. But he was kind of right because he pushed, if he hadn't have done that, it, the project never would have moved to the point that it was because yeah, someone got her first uh, real chin. I got my first real chin. Yeah, I got to give him credit for that. Um, but he was right because I was using the same group of bucks and the same group of does and I was coming out with the same outcome. And sometimes you get a little barn blind and you're just like, well, no, I know it's going to work. If I just, if I just do it again, it'll work. And he was like, no, you got to use this buck. So you do have to give him credit because if it wasn't for that, we probably, I would have scrapped the whole thing probably at that point. So so the chins were accepted in 2013. That was my final successful chin showing at the uh, 2013 ARBA convention in Pennsylvania. And that made the chin the seventh recognized color by the ARBA and, or yeah, by the ARBA and uh, made them eligible as of 2014. And there's a picture of the infamous uh, whiteboard that if you're a COD presenter, this is the board you wanna see your name on with the green pass next to it. So um, that was pretty exciting when that finally happened. So let's look at the chinchilla standard. Um, this is exactly how it's written in the SOP, except I've broken it down each sentence into um, separated it out so we can look at each part of it. So the color is to resemble a real chinchilla. The surface color on the top and sides of the body is to be pearl white ticked with black. There is to be a black band at the top of the intermediary band. The intermediate band is to be well-defined pearl white over a dark slate blue undercolor. The belly should 
display a white surface color with a slate blue undercolor extending from the inside of the rear legs over the belly to the undercut. The top of the tail is to be black, sparsely ticked with white. Ears are to be laced in black. Eye circles are desirable. Eyes, dark brown preferred, blue grade permiss permissible. Faults are salt and pepper appearance, faded under color, too light or too dark in color, brown patches or brownish tinge to the ring color. And disqualifications are extremely light or extremely dark color extremely brown ring color, absence of black ear lacing or absence of ring color. So a little bit on the chin development. It's really important to note that baby chin Dutch are not born with a perfect chin color when they come, when they get their fur in the nest box. Um, most of the time they will have a brownish tinge when they are young that most of the time will molt out. And if you look at the little baby in the front and we'll, uh, I have better pictures further down, but right over the spine, You'll notice it's just a little bit brown, uh, brassy tinge, and the rabbit right behind it to the left has a, uh, a neck drag, and you can see it's got a little bit of brown um, tinge in that. So do not automatically cull young chins if they present with a, a, a slight brownish tinge. Knowing your line or the line that your chins come from is really important. Talk to the breeder that you get the stock from to better understand how that line actually develops. Um, some people have chins that actually came from were developed out of a different breed. And so they might develop a little bit different. Um, these are the chins. Okay, there are some chins that are so muddy colored, meaning that they have so much brown tinge over the whole body, including the head, that it's hard to tell if they're a gray or a chin when they're young. And we call those at a young age. Um, in the next slides, I have broken down um, the standard and put examples of young stock after each side so you can see kind of the development. So what does a chinchilla actually look like? So some people are like, well, I'm not really sure. Okay, so on the left, you have a steel, a chin, and a gray. And the steel is basically a black rabbit with salt, kind of salt shaken on it to be that white ticking. In the middle, you have the chin, and then the gray is off to the right. And you can see that the chin is that, um, what is that, that blue slate under color, and then the gray has the tan the tan um, undercolor. So on the right are babies under six weeks old. So the top one is a baby steel and the bottom one is a baby chin. So let's look at the undercolor of chinchillas. So far left, you got a chinchilla. Now a chinchilla is an agouti based rabbit. So just like a gray, they have to have a white belly and then you blow into it and you see their undercolor. And to find the undercut, you need to blow where the undercut should be up and down and you'll be able to see that line in their skin of where their undercut is. Um, both the chin and the gray do have the lap spots, which are the colored lines right by the hind hips. Or, yeah, I guess you call it hips. Knees, what do you call Groin, yeah. All three have lap spots. Well, they all three have lap spots, but yeah, I mean, the, the chin and the gray have a white belly, so it stands out a whole lot more. You are right, Troy. Um, and then, so the gray in the middle, it has the tan uh, lap spots. And then the steel to the right, you can see the black lap spots, but they should have more, well, how do you describe it? Well, in a sense, you almost shouldn't see it because the belly is supposed to be the same color as the back. So therefore, in a sense, that's too light of a belly. Correct. Or, or it's the yellow color. But. Yeah, so that gives you an idea. But they should never be a steel, cannot be like a chin or a gray and be white on their belly. Right. That is, no, no, that doesn't work. And also talking about the, the undercut, um, you need to blow into it, obviously. And obvi obviously, just like any other colors, you can get drags yes. it, uh, that, that go down and it maybe looks like it just, there's white all the way down to the belly button. As long as it's not a spot, it, it should be just considered a drake then. And in fact, what was it? My second year presentation rabbits? I can't remember. It was one of the year presentation rabbits. They, I had a buck that had that and one of his offspring had the same thing. It had a huge like, like cliff falls off and went back up again. Um, so yeah, you, I mean, just like any other color can have that same thing, but you have to blow to actually find it on these guys. Right. Okay. I didn't get any baby chins or baby grays uh, during this time that I was getting this presentation because whenever you want them, you never get them. So I pulled this picture, which I still think can help um, show a little bit. So nest box colors, a lot of people, especially new people are like, well, how do I know if I have a chin in the nest box? Okay, 
So since chinchillas are an agouti-based rabbit, they are like a gray. At birth, they will be black on top with a white belly. So on the picture on the right, you've got chocolate, lilac, blue, and black. So you're, in order to think that you might have a gray or a chin, it better be black on the top like that and white on the belly when you turn it over. If you've got one that's bluish or any other color, it's not gonna be a chin. If they, or there you go. If the kits are not black on top, with a white belly, they're not gonna be chinchilla or gray. If they're blue on top with a white belly, this is not a chinchilla, but it could be an opal or what they call blue gray, or it could be a squirrel. You won't know until it gets bigger. If they're black on top with a dark or black belly, it's gonna be either a black or a steel. And the sense on that one, you'll see the difference because of the ears. Um, you both your gray or the booty based colors, the ears are gonna be white. Um, the, the self or, or the tick pattern of a steel, they're going to be black. Yep. You will not be able to tell the difference at birth um, if until the kit gets um, furred up, if it's actually going to be a chin or a gray. So you could have a litter there. They're all black on top. They all got white bellies, you know, right at birth. You got to give them a little bit and then you'll see the ticking come in and then you'd be like, oh, well, I have a chin and I have a, you know, a, a gray. So you have to wait a little while. Yeah. As we did this, is the toys of one in the litter and it's like, ooh, brown. So it is, oh, there's the white one of the chin. So yeah. So he was a present that's looking at that. And you'll notice that they always develop it, it seems like on their head, head first. first. Yeah. It's funny. I, I, I don't know why that is, but yeah, their heads always seem to develop it first. So you'll be able to, they'll be looking at you and be like, oh, it's a gray. Oh, it's a chin. Yeah. So. Okay. Let's break down the chinchilla color a little bit more. So the color is to resemble a real chinchilla. This, this is out of the SOP. Um, the surface color on top and sides of the body is to be pearl white ticked with black. There is to be a black band at the top of the intermediary band and ears are to be laced in black. So here's your picture of your chin on the side. And the bottom picture is just showing kind of the black longer thick guard hairs. You can see on the picture on the right that they've got the black around the ear. Um, and one thing, to note here or is in the next slide. I think it's the next slide, right? Let's see. Which is the next slide? Yep, next slide. Okay, not salt and pepper appearance. The standard doesn't explain it in the body when it explains color, um, yeah, the, the color the, description. Wait, go back to the one. I don't know how to go back one. All right. As it's stated in, in the the biggest difference of the surface color that you can get with the salt and pepper is when you get salt and pepper, usually the rabbit is going to be black with, with the white taking. Is generally, it's the rabbits are too dark in surface color. Okay, right. So, so the standard doesn't explain in the body of the description, but as a fault, it states salt and pepper appearance is a fault. So I don't have an example to show you of what salt and pepper looks like because we cold them. But in this picture, you want the wavy pattern. If you really look, you can see where the black kind of zigzags and then you see some white zigzag and let's see David can you tell me how to go backwards how do I go back yeah so to go backwards uh on your uh keyboard just push the left arrow oh perfect oh. okay yeah I learned something new so if you look back here really yeah if you look back here so you got the steel on the left which does look salt and pepper it looks like a black rabbit that somebody threw salt or powder or flour on. And then the middle rabbit, you can definitely see the chin and you can really see the waviness of pattern um, in their coat um, where the black kind of, the black ticking isn't straight. It's kind of wavy. If that makes sense. Yeah, you can see lines of black and lines of white. That's what the waviness is trying to, that's what you're looking for for waviness. And you can see too on the gray, I know my flash wasn't as good on the gray, but the gray has the waviness too. You want, it's just the black with the, what is it, the tan and the medium color. And you can see the same waviness. So grays and chin should both not look like salt and pepper. So it's really good here to be able to see the steel, to see the difference. And, but if you look at the baby, when they're baby like this, you might say, well, that one kind of looks salt and pepper. Well, when they're that little, they got cottony fur, you really can't, they got baby, they coat. Got baby coat and yeah. you can't see. So you never just call them at that age and say, oh my gosh, it must be salt and pepper. And with any agouti, pretty much when they're little like this, if you were to blow right over the top of their spine, you're not going to see a ring right there because they're, they're you're not going to see a well-defined good ring. It's all cottony and it's all fuzzy and all of that. So you just got to give them a little bit to grow up there. So let's go back. Okay, so back, we're back to the wavy. So no salt and pepper. 
So if you do get a senior or, you know, get one that is truly salt and pepper after it molts out, you do not want to breed that back in. You want this wavy pattern. Yeah. Then do you, then uh, especially when you judge the rabbit, if you don't see the waviness, it's because it's salt and pepper, and therefore it should be faulted. The word defines between the, then the rabbit being too dark for the, for the actual variety of being DQ'd for being too dark, that, that lines in the judge itself. And we'd see, we'd much rather see rabbits DQ'd for something that's too dark and not see them the waviness. That's what this, the color's intended for. Okay, so let's go back to looking at young chins again in their surface color. So an overly dark chinchilla, and when I say overly dark, I should have probably said like so dark and muddied that you can't really tell what it is, those should be cold. But we do see a typical triangle on young chins of brownish coloring, and this tends to molt out by senior age. Most of the time they molt about out around three to four months. So here's a little baby, it's the same rabbit in both pictures. So if you look on the picture on the right, there's that triangle that you're going to see some of the muddiness in. And if you look, you'll see it's a little bit browner tinge than where that yellow star is further back over its hips and down low, it's going to be, it's much more bright and, and that pearly whitish, it's not real white, it's pearl color. And then this is the same rabbit on the left. You can still see in that triangle where it's kind of a little muddy, but down on the side, it's nice and bright. The key is to have the only the triangle area have that brownish tinge on the top where the side um, is cleaner. And each line develops, like I said, a little differently. So knowing your lines helps you make an informed decision on young stock. This is, I mean, this is, we can, we can tag these rabbits and we this know is, they turn out when they get bigger, exactly what they're going to look like. This has been a rule of thumb. If it has, basically if it has two or basically any brownish tinge in that uh, yellow circle area, it, it will be called and, and go down the line. Um, at this, this age, at this, at age. this age. And obviously then if it doesn't molt it out over the top, the rabbit's thing. Then it goes too, yes. yes. But we give so, it a little more time for that. There's like any of the, the juniors in, in the cootie pattern. Right. Okay, so let's break down the surface color now. The intermediate band is to be well-defined, pearl white over a dark slate blue color. And we have found that if a chin has that brownish tinge in the intermediate band, it tends to be mainly over that triangle, over that top. If your chin has the brownish tinge on the sides, like we said, um, then the rabbit should not be used in breeding program. And this is that senior age and on the sides, hips and down lower. And you can see this is a five month old junior. And you can see, this is over the top, even though it kind of doesn't look like it, pictures kind of rotated, it's over the top. So kind of um, the green is pointing to a little bit to the left side of the rabbit and the red line is pointing a little bit to the right side of the rabbit, just off of its spine. And you can see that it's already, it's already cleaning up over the rabbit's left side and it's still just a little bit muddy on the rabbit's right side. So the rabbit's still kind of molting out that coat. Okay, young chins continue. Okay, a good rule of thumb that we found for the young chins is if they show the triangle brown tinge, check the intermediate ring color on the sides. If that side is clean, then odds are it's gonna clean up like we said before. So here's another, uh, another rabbit who's a little bit more muddy. This is the same rabbit. It's even more muddy in that intermediate band, but you can see how clean it is down on its side. Um, and typically it's, uh, it'll be both sides will be this clean, but you can yeah, see how much cleaner it is. Yeah, so the left with the green arrow is more on, say it's rib area that you're blowing to it on, this, on that side. And then the red would be like right over its spine or between its blowing. Yep, and that's the same rabbit. So you can see how much of a difference. So um, that's why you got it. They develop a little bit later than other colors would just pop up. You, you, they're not like, boom, they come out like blacks and they're good to go. So let's look at chinchilla surface color variation. Like with other varieties, you can see a variation in surface color. So the SOP says a DQ extremely light or extremely dark. So here's two chins. Um, in both of the rabbits, you can still see the waviness to them. And neither of them is extremely too dark or extremely too light, but you do have a variation. Troy, go ahead. Yeah, I don't like the top one. He doesn't like the top one, yes. And we're just strictly talking about surface color. Obviously, the Obviously, the, the, the rabbit in front, you can see the brown tinge more, but the actual surface color of the black and white, uh, if you took a black and white picture, would be better. It, because just because of the fact that you see the waviness of that pattern. And the far, the one on the far back, I am 
borderline same as salt and pepper and it doesn't touch uh, touch darker. Remember, it's supposed to be a white rabbit with bl with black ticking on it, not a black rabbit with white ticking. There, I said that wrong. We got you. Yeah. All right, so Troy had this really good thing that he found. Explain it. All right, uh, this is pretty interesting. Uh, with your on your screen, obviously you can read it right there. But if you put your finger in the middle. The two colors look the same on the very top and on the bottom. That's the principle of what you're seeing on this, this rabbit that's in the front and the rabbit in, in the back. In a sense, they have the same amount of brownish tinge in their inner or yeah, in their intermediate color, but you think the one in the further back is more clean than the one in the front just because you can see it. And that's that's what this picture is trying to identify, is that a dark rabbit will hide the brownest, brownest tinge, but the lighter one is going to show it out. That's kind of cool. It's kind of blurry, but it's yeah. kind of a cool thing. If you put your finger up there, you'll kind of, you move your finger back and forth and you'll find the spot that it actually does. It's kind of cool. Okay, so let's break down the belly color. Um, the belly should display a white surface color with a slate blue undercolor extending from the inside of the rear legs over the belly to the undercut. So like the gray, you have to blow into the fur to see the undercolor and the stops are gonna be the same way. So I was trying to hold this rabbit upside down, blow in it and take the picture all at once because Troy wasn't here. So this is my best attempt. So I know it's not very big, but I drew the red line to where I was blowing into it. And you can see the blue undercolor on the white belly. Um, eye circles are desirable. In fact, I don't think I've ever seen a chin come out that didn't have eye circles. I at think. least ours. So at least ours, yeah. So. Um, now it's not like an eye circle, like you're gonna see a, a dwarf o toad or an o toad. It's not like, I mean, obviously she doesn't have the big white over the top, but I mean, she does have eye circles. So both of these, the belly color and the eye circles. Oh, and then the top of the tail is to be black, sparsely ticked with white. Um, all of these traits on this, there should be no difference in the little stock or young stock to the adults. So if you're looking at little tiny juniors, and you don't see eye circles or you don't see you don't see a white belly and you blow into it and you see blue, then they need to be cold because they are not, that is not what you want to be using in your in your um, breeding. Chinchilla eye color, eyes dark brown, preferred blue gray permissible. All right, this is probably the most talked about portion of the chinchilla ever. In the Dutch. In the Dutch, yeah. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, in the Dutch. Dutch people. Since I use the standard chin to create the chinchilla Dutch, they tend to follow the characteristics of a standard chin. Standard chins have a blue, gray, and brown eye. I have found that brown-eyed chin, brown chins tend to have darker surface color and a narrow intermediate ring when they have brown eyes from the start, meaning when they come out of the nest box, they're brown-eyed. Um, most, almost all the chins that we have have a blue, gray eye, when they come out of the nest box. And blue gray eyed chins tend to have a more correct surface color, cleaner, whiter, intermediate ring color. And our experience is, is that 98% of all of our chins we've ever bred end up with a brown eye. Uh, although almost all of them start with a blue gray eye. And I have experienced what I call the transitional eye color. And this starts as a blue gray and it changes to what I call a kind of a putty color. And then they finish it brown. Like I said, 98% of all of our seniors and everything we've grown up to seniors all have brown eyes. So during this like transition period from blue gray to putty to brown, you might think that they're marbled or mottled, which in the yeah. standard, well, they are. Yeah, I mean, which, you know, people say, oh my gosh, it's a marbled eye, you gotta DQ it. Now, different lines might be different, but this is what we see in all of the stuff that we've bred. So you really have to know your line and don't call solely on one period in time when you think that the eye is one way or another. So let's look at the eyes. So here's a little um, six week old bunny and hopefully you can see it's blue gray eye. And here is this putty stage, I call it. So the rabbit has gone from this blue gray eye into this putty colored eye at four months old. So here's the same putty kind of colored eye. And then here's a senior with a brown eye. You want to explain? You want to talk a little on that? Yeah, what, what happens is in that iris, you have blood vessels. And then on the blue, when it's blue gray, you if you're watching the eye color and looking at that the baby's eye color, you'll see that the, those veins will actually turn brown-ish color more than the blue gray. It'll turn different color than, than what in the sense what normal it is. 
And then I was then uh, when the vessels turn color, and then the color around the eye will then, then turn to the brown. Um, besides, no one is seeing what it does. Is I mean that's why it's doing it. Don't know, but that's what it does. Uh, we have the like you said on the bottom. Yeah, you have the tendency if you put it in light, you help because everything about the eye that that helps develop it. It needs to be the UV sun, which is vitamin. D. And so your body cannot, if you get vitamin D, it can't do anything, or the animals can't do anything with the vitamin D. It needs the process of the, of the UV light of the sun. So therefore, you just help the process along. Um, the rabbits will, uh, obviously, with that, with the uh, marbled eye, I think we've had one that got stuck in, in a, a sense that when it was a senior, and obviously it went down the road for being cold. Um, but yeah, like Jill said, is don't be too critical. There's a little change period and there's when you go from blue gray to brown and like, I mean, it's 90%. So we do get some, a few here and there that have, I mean, that blue are, gray. Blue, are blue gray and they say blue gray. And the tendency of that is because they came from the chins that they're a little bit lighter blue gray eye than most people, uh, of, like a, a blue Dutch. They think, oh, look, it's a different color than the blue Dutch blue gray eye. But it is in the sense that really it's it matches what what the color is for what it came from. So we have a couple of cages in our barn that are near the um, windows, and those get moved around a lot with the juniors, and we just kind of give them time there, and it moves along. Each rabbit moves along at its own pace, and yeah, are there sometimes that we don't pull a junior to show? Yeah, because it's in the middle of that transition, and the last thing you want to do is take it to a show, and the judge go, oh, it's marble, or you know, DQ it. So you just keep them at home, but. I mean, I don't think right now, I don't think we have any blue gray seniors eye color in our barn at all. I don't think we've had one in quite a while. We'd have to look, but I don't think so. But like I said, they all they all end up turning brown. So that's so rare that it has it's usually. Yeah. Okay, breeding chinchilla. So the big question is what do you breed a chinchilla to? Ideally, you want to go chin to chin or chin to gray or chin to a steel that comes out of chin lines. Um, whoops. I think I didn't delete that all the way. Cambry to chin to steel. Okay. Um, okay, so that line, get rid of the Cambry to chin to steel, non-chin line. There was going to be something else written after that. You want to stay away from um, chin to black, chin to blue, chin to chocolate, obviously chin to tort. Yeah. Steels uh, with blue in the background, it is not recommended. And what colors are you going to get? Well, it kind of depends on what's behind the parents, obviously. So if you breed a chin to a gray and the gray has no chin in the lines, you're probably going to get all grays. If you breed a chin to a steel with no chin in the lines, you're probably going to get grays and blacks. If you breed a chin to another color or one of those colors with chin in the background, you're going to start to see some chins, but gray and black are dominant over the chin color. So, you know, it's going to take a little while yeah, to get that. I mean, don't just assume that you, you got a gray that comes out of chin and you uh and you breed it to your chin and you're gonna have a whole litter of seven chins i mean it's not gonna probably happen yeah, most people think oh, it's chin was breed to black because you can always breed everything to black and actually of the of the gray steel and uh, in the sense black is the, the worst color to breed to is black the reason why is that you'll get frost not maybe first or second generation but down the road you, you will and it's very frustrating after that well, and luckily if, we have stayed away, but we've known another two breeders that has happened. Well, and if your black has blue behind it, then you put a whole nother realm of stuff into it the or chocolate. Yeah. 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 Anyway. All right. Chins and markings. So when breeding Dutch, you always get them mismarked. Doesn't matter what color you breed together. That's just a game home with raising Dutch. Um, markings that you don't want to retain for breeding are white ears or partial white ears, the narrow blaze with really low cheeks very uh, little white on one shoulder where the other shoulder is completely uh, colored or very colored rabbits. So because the standard chin is solid, uh, solid colored rabbit and did not, does not have the Vienna gene, you don't want to keep anything that's overly colored because you start putting that back in there and now you're going to start narrowing all your markings back down again. You're trying to, you know, keep your markings where they should be on a Dutch. So you don't want to revert back to like what I would call my first couple of generations where everything was really, really narrow. Yeah, that's as funny as usually on Dutch, you want to keep everything that has too much color. 
too much white is bad, but then creating these chins where we found that is too much white is actually a little bit better. Because now, the, 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 the balance in that is, is, is more critical on what I've noticed with this, these chins because they can quickly slide one way or the other really, really, really fast. So you still, of course, want to breed for good Dutch type, uh, for a good Dutch and type, including, you know, head, ears, and fur. Obviously, that's the yeah, goal. You got to build the house first. You got to build the house first, yes. So um, chins and other characteristics. So other characteristics that you do not want to breed into your line are the extremely long ears, head, and type, extremely pinched hindquarters, narrow shoulders, midsection, extremely dark surface color, extremely muddy intermediate rings as a senior, extremely narrow intermediate ring as a senior or extremely long hair shaft um, length as a senior too. I mean, those standard chins have a lot longer hair length or shaft hair length. So you, every once in a while they will pop up and you, you do not want to breed for that. You want to breed for Dutch looking chins and short dense fur. Short dense fur. And there's a little tiny cute little baby in the nest box. And that's what you're kind of going for that cute little Dutch look to them. So you got anything else to add? Uh, just that, what was it, like 2005, as, as I always thought about doing this project, and I was talking to Mr. Scott Williamson, and... Wait, and he, was this before me? Yeah. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And then he goes, hey, Jill's working on this this project. Go talk to her about it. And I guess that was the first time I ever talked to Jill. Oh, well, isn't that great? Oh, but I still have the COD in my name, not yours, but... <laughs> Anyway, so do you have any questions, David, that or something we didn't cover very well? Uh, isn't that funny? Um, you guys hit every single area that I kind of would even think of, of doing in terms of the, the uh, like talking about chin color. Um, I mean, I, I really liked, you know, how you described how you uh, develop the variety within the, within the, um, if somebody was trying to continue to improve them, how would somebody do it that was like just starting out? Or let me ask two questions. First one is like, if somebody was uh, uh, like a chin breeder and they wanted to pro progress in the variety and, and make them better, like that they needed to correct type or they needed to correct a specific marking, how do they do it? What's the best way to do it? Find, find a bad color, great, tell you the truth with that good characteristic that right. you want. Like, let's say it's type, right? If, if you need type, whatever, find one that is, you get, nah. <laughs> you go, you, I mean, but it is gray. Gray is your best bet to go forward. Steel has too much behind it. You must be a very strict color when it comes to those colors in the, in the nest box. Um, and like I said before, black is the worst color. Yeah, I mean, right there with Tori. It'd be better to be blue or chocolate. Tell you the truth, then. Not that we but, recommend that, but right, but <laughs> understand that that's that's where you're at. With that. Because so you're, those 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 frosts, people not admit it, or the chin breeders won't openly admit it and everything else. But they get their if you're if you brought in blacks, you're going to get you, you have frosts. Yeah, and you're going to maybe not the first not the first generation generation, but it will it, come it will pop. Yeah, makes, um, makes sense. That, and that that's what I was curious on was was uh, like what variety somebody would go to. Um, the no, wait, 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 let me finish that. So the yeah, type, type, uh, yeah, type in general, general type, head and ears and stuff like that was more the gray. And now to really shorten that fur, we took the chance and we bred it into the steel. Or, yeah, the steels. And that really, really helped out the, 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 the but you had to quality. We really had to call really, really because really you cannot tight. keep any blacks. Blacks gone. Yeah. I mean, they, they went. They didn't. It was. We weren't going to look at them. And there were some pretty ones. Yeah, we were not going to look at them. So, like, if you're a newer breeder and they're like, "Oh, but this black is so pretty. I'm going to yeah. keep it." That's where you could have that. Oh problem. shoot! That that ends up being a problem. You have to be really, really strict and know you're only doing it to get fur. And that, or you know, that's or what you chin. have to do. That's that's the only color you can keep is chin or gray. That's two. Period. Uh, I mean, yeah. You know, as a judge, or as judges, and and us all handling a lot of rabbits, that's one observation that I see is that like different varieties do um, 
have different lengths of fur like that naturally like a steel just autom- like for whatever reason it automatically has a shorter coat it's different feeling than others um like but it's weird that the rabbit still when it if you breed it to something random um they can have breed it something random that it still has like the length modifier in the in its yep. genetics and so like when you breed it to something else that's still when it, it when it be, expresses as a blue it already has that defined length to it so i don't i, I do find it I, I find it interesting how whatever color truly gets expressed by the, the physical being of the rabbit that it is affected by what the color is like the the color impacts it um but so the other question though that i wanted to ma- make sure i mentioned or asked was if somebody was just getting started in chin dust, they were Dutch, they were super excited about the variety. What would you say they should do to begin in the variety? The same as any other color. You've got to get go, quality. Go to a breeder and... And that's, I, that's not necessarily... You have to look at the quality from that breeder. Just because they're a national breeder doesn't mean that they're... Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I mean, but I would say that... I mean, I don't know. Would you agree that you don't want to buy one chin here, one chin here, one chin here, one chin here, and then I'll start throwing them all together. Now... Not to say that you don't want to bring in some different bloodlines, but kind of look and see if they're if they're bred kind of down the same line but further apart. You know, then you know you want to find the best quality group of rabbits you can, and don't try and go out there and go get twenty does to start breeding because you're just going to run it and chins are going to be your thing, right? I would say like a trio. Start with that and learn how that line actually develops to see what you need to bring in and try to get them. You don't want to closely, closely line breed, but you kind of want to, if you're not from the same breeder to at least somewhat be line breeding and you do pull something because I mean, everybody needs to bring in a little bit different genetics, but you have to watch how that's going to play impact and how it's going to be. And if you don't really know how that line breeds for you to run out and go buy rabbits from different people and then bring them all home and mix them together. And then your first whole litters, you're like, oh my God, they're horrible. I'm getting out of chins. You got to remember chins are still evolving. So you have to kind of know what that line does to know what you need to add in to make it even better. So they are still kind of not infancy. I mean, they, they, they have strong genetics. I mean, you can tell, but you know, the people that say, oh, well, I can tell that that must come out of a chin. Well, come on now. We've all seen blacks that come out of, you know, that show up looking like, where did that come from? You know, so I would say start small, you know, don't run out thinking you're going to go get, you know, 20 or 30 breeds and, and, and don't just look at the people that have the highest points. This should be with any color. You just don't go off of the sweepstakes. Whoever has the highest points on the sweepstakes, that's who I'm buying rabbits from. You got to go look at their rabbits, see how they look. You're going to see what their rabbits kind of look like. And if that's what you perceive the standard to be and what you want your rabbits to look like, then that's the rabbits you need to start with. And then you need to look at it when you need to bring in something else, go to another breeder and see if they have something that looks similar to it. And then you just got to test it and see. But I would say start small because it's stuff like this, like, you know, I've had people that call me and go, oh my God, they have blue gray eyes. I got to call the whole litter. No, they're like eight weeks old. Don't kill, don't call them, you know, just let them be. No, no, no. It's this Brown is desirable, you know, I need to go with brown. No, you need to see how that litter turns out, you know, and then the little triangle on the top, that's really telltale for urky rabbits, really, you're going to see that. And so, you know, you got to let some of these develop and say, yeah, that's right. Hey, when I blow on the side, it looks clean. And look, they lose it at three to four months, you know, so a lot well, of it is junior, that. Your junior prime coat comes in and then they color it and smokes it out. What's really nice about that too, is that they just keep getting lighter and lighter over the years then too. I mean, and be willing to devote cage space to it. Don't just say, well, I already raised steels and grays. So I'm just going to go get uh, two chin does. I'm just going to cross them into what I have and I'm going to make a chin. And eh, you're probably not going to do that. You know? You're going to raise a whole lot of grays. Yeah. So you, you really have to be committed and, you know, get the breeding trio pair, whatever you want to call it, but make sure you have bucks and does, not just you're going to dump them into your other colors. So does that help? it's quality, not quantity. And I think sometimes, I think we all need to remember that in whatever color that we raise. It's the quality of your rabbits, not how many you bring necessarily, you know? And so as long as you know, you're improving it, I mean, and if we get a really, really nice one, obviously we're going to keep it. And then we call two of our older stuff that, you know, now we've moved past that genetics, you know, and keep trying to move forward all the time. So that's, those are the questions I really had. Um, I appreciate you guys doing this. Thank you.